Italians had quit and the Germans were retreating, giving way slowly, violently making us pay for every inch of ground. Get the hell out there and get me some intelligence. Yes, sir. There are patrols, snipers, oh, landmines. But we went on anyway. Something's coming. Get ready! Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Brave New Hollywood. My guest today is actor, creator, producer Alexander Ludwig, and we're here to talk about his latest film, a World War II thriller drama, Recon. Alexander, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Well, hey, so thank you for talk- having me. Th- oh, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Let me have you talk about uh, the film and explain what this film is about. Uh, Recon is really a character study of, uh, of uh, a few men, but in specific to me, one, one man, uh, one man's journey um, through the wilderness uh, in 1944 uh, in, uh, in Italy uh, during the winter. And um, basically, his, uh, he struggles with his own morality as he witnesses a, uh, the murder of an innocent by uh, his own men. Um, and he kind of goes on this reconnaissance mission through the woods, um, um, as he kind of tries to figure out, uh, the kind of man he wants to be. Mm -hmm. Um, what drew me so much to this project was simply that, um, underneath, um, the external elements is, uh, was just this incredibly complex story, uh, about a man uh, questioning his own morality. And it's something that I think a lot of people can relate to. And, um, uh, the fact that it was based off of, uh, Richard Bausch's father, who Richard was the author of a, a book called peace, which is recon, which what recon is based off of. It was a New York times bestseller and just a fabulous book. So I was incredibly humbled to, uh, get to portray, uh, a version of his father and kind of tell this story. Cause I think it's a, and it's an important one. Is that the reason that you also executive produced the film? Yeah, you know, I, I've I've worked with Rick before, uh, Rick Dugdale, who's just such a fabulous guy, and um, I, you know, I spoke to him about how it, how much this project kind of connected with me, and um, how I wanted to be involved in an even deeper level um, than than just um, portraying Marson. You know, I, I I thought that the story was a special one, and and I wanted to be as involved as I possibly could have been. So, graciously, he you know, he brought me on board as a, as an executive producer and, um, you know, together with Robert Port, we, you know, went through the harsh winters of Canada and, and, um, uh, and really kind of got a, a very small glimpse into the, uh, just what a traumatizing experience must have been for anybody uh, in a situation like that. And uh, you guys pu- pulled together a, a good ensemble of actors. Can you tell me a little oh. more about your uh, co-stars? They're phenomenal. Sam Keeley, uh, uh, Chris Brochu, the phenomenal Franco Nero, um, you know, RJ Featherstone. Uh, there, there was so many uh, just amazing actors that we had on this on this production. And every, I will say it was really not like any camaraderie you see on screen was exactly how it was off screen. You know, we... Together, we all felt this kind of immense responsibility to tell the story and tell it right. Uh, Meanwhile, this kind of feeling that like we all had to suck it up together because um, it was not an easy shoot. You know, it was, you know, there was days where it was negative 16 and we were in the middle of the winter without gloves and without helmets. and, um, And what kept driving us, I think, was that, you know, you know, it was that feeling of like, well, I'm going to go through it because they're going through it. Um, and I felt like our crew felt the same way. And I can only imagine that that's that similar mindset must happen. Um, in actual wartime, the difference being that like, a, we weren't worried about getting shot and, you know, and B we got to go home every night and I just can't even imagine, uh, what it would have been like to be in that, in that situation. And we did the best we could with what we had to, to, show, to kind of convey that to the audience. We'll be wide open for sniper fire crossing that thing. Our alternative? Uh, a couple hours around at least. L'unica soluzione è attraversare il ponte. 
across the bridge, bridge Securos. You mentioned uh, Franco Nero, uh, a screen icon. <laughs> uh, how was it working with him, starring opposite him in, in a film? An absolute dream. I, I've been a fan of Franco's for, for years, and uh, getting to work with him was, was above and beyond every expectation I could have ever imagined. He's just such a gracious human being, such a talented actor. And um, I mean, God, the guy's in his 70s, and he's, he's, you know, and that was another thing. I mean, God we can't complain because Franco's going through all this shit with us, you know, and like that, that was amazing. And I mean, we still stay in touch and, you know, I was in, I, I was in Italy uh, uh, about a year ago and I, I went and visited him and his sister and we had a nice family dinner together. And, you know, he's, he's a very dear to my heart and I, you know, that man, he feels deeply and loves deeply and um, so grateful to have gotten to, to call him a, a scene partner, but more importantly, a friend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, one thing I definitely wanted to talk to you about, uh, your performance in this film is a very emotional one. And after I watched the entire film, I realized how important and sort of necessary it is. When was it that you made that decision? And how, di how did you decide to go there into that level? I saw, you know, I've dealt with my own personal struggles through my life and, um, you know, with addiction and, and whatnot. And, there was a really dark period of time for me, you know, years ago. And I, and I, and I drew from that and I just, you know, I, I saw myself in him that, that, you know, we, we all, we as human beings, we're all faced with this mirror that life puts on us and they go, okay, what kind of man are you going to be? What kind of person are you going to be? And it's not an easy choice to make. Um, in hindsight it is, but at the time it's, you know, it's, there's so many more complexities that come with it. And I think that Marcin, um, uh, in a way just becomes overwhelmed with that, with that decision, because there's so many things he's thinking about at once, you know, it's how do you choose between right and wrong when everything around you is telling you and when everything around you is wrong. And, um, and it, it seems so simple now, but like, it, you know, in that moment for him, he's, these are his friends and the people that he would die for. And, and yet some of them committed an egregious act, one that you don't come back from. And, you know, he's trying to keep his squad alive, but he's also trying to do the right thing. And um, the sniper in this film in a weird way, I think really, I'd be interested to talk to Rob more about this, but I, you know, I believe that it really serves as a metaphor as this kind of omnipresent, force that is invisible but is always there and it's simple and, and i think in a weird way it kind of represents uh Marzen's guilt for having witnessed this and then not knowing what he should do about it you know and uh, for me it was a very simple decision for, to get emotion to to really collapse by the end of it i mean i don't know unless you're superman that kind of uh, how that kind of a uh, guilt and um, responsibility uh, wouldn't cripple you uh, until you finally let go, you know. Speaking of uh, responsibility, um, I assume, you, of course, you understood the responsibility of bringing something in onto the screen that is truth-based. What were you thinking about? What is the responsibility of you, cast, crew, everybody to be truthful? So like my responsibility as an actor in my process is to always be truthful no matter what, like whatever it is and whatever I do, that is, that is the heart of what I do is, is just being truthful. Uh, and that I, in every bone and inch of my body believe what's happening and, and what's going on and in terms of the overall context of the story and being truthful of that. Um, uh, it was very easy to, to feel that responsibility and, um, uh, simply also because, you know, Robert Porter, our director, it, he is such an advocate for this story uh, and stories like it. Um, and his passion for these things is just infects you through osmosis, you know, and um, uh, working with him was such a dream uh, for me. I think he's such a talent. Um, and what we were able to do with the budget we had is pretty remarkable, I think. And, um, it, yeah, I mean, 
you know, I'd like to say that there's always the same pressure, but of course there's always a little bit more when you know it's a true story. And when you know that there are people who are alive today or people who had family members who actually went through it. Um, so there's always a pressure there, but um, at the end of the day, all I can do is be, is, is, is talk to everyone I can and, and, and do as much research as I can to be as truthful as I possibly can be uh, through my character. This is also a journey of self-discovery, the human body, the, the limits of human soul or human body. Are there things in life that you took on that were, you know, were big challenges quite a lot, but then you came at the other end of it, uh, you know, positive and victorious. Anything you can share? Becoming an actor is a great, is a great one. You know, that's not a, that's, there's no um, yellow brick road you can follow to being successful in this business. You know, it's, uh, you throw a dart at a wall and, and, you know, you keep throwing these lines in the water and you hope that you get a bite. And, um, I had this conversation with somebody else earlier. And the one thing I would say to anybody who's ever thinking about doing something like that, like, you know, it's a long road, but it's a fulfilling one. I think when you do something you love, um, it's, it's very easy to, to continue through, um, you know, Steve Jobs said this too, and I thought it was a really interesting quote. He's like, you know, once you do what you, when you do what you love, any sane person would have quit, but it's because you love it so much that you continue. And it's exactly how I feel like, you know, through the, the bumps in the road or whatever, like there's this unrelenting um, pursuit of, of what I, what I love. And uh, this mantra I've had since I was a kid and I don't know where it came from, but I'm so grateful that I have it. It was that, you know, if I was, 80 years old and jobless, at least I would have made my 12 year old self proud, you know, and, and that's, that's what always gave me that hope to be fearless and to keep going for, for what I love, you know, because also what else is there? You know, there's nothing wrong with taking a nine to five at a desk job, as long as you're still following what you want on the side, you know, but like we owe it to ourselves to do that. You know, life is such a gift, you know, and I think that's why, somebody like Marcin is so just um, just rocked by what happened was, was because he understands that, that life is such a gift. And, and in one instant, that was taken away from an innocent person who had nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. And um, as a creative person that you are, what are the type of things that get your attention, that, uh, that excite you? I love great stories. You know, I love... I, lo I love great characters, great stories, complex characters. I don't like caricatures. You know, I don't, I want to see, that's what I loved about this movie too, was just that it's just, it's not what I expected. And I just like that, you know, with the show I'm doing right now, this is probably one of the most complex characters I've ever done. And, and we all are complex. So I think for me, just what drives me is great stories. Um, I love drama and I also find that I, I am drawn to these war films, if, if, for lack of a better word, simply because um, I feel like drama is at its highest when you're put in these, these, question, uh, these life or death situations when um, you're literally staring down your own morality and having to make a decision of what kind of person you are, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Uh and Alexander, what are you working on now? Anything you can talk about? Yeah, I'm doing a new TV show uh, for stars right now called Heels. And it's about two brothers in Georgia who own an independent wrestling promotion. And they want to make it to the WWE, essentially the WWE. And, um, you know, they, they end up, you know, clashing heads. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, I'm so excited for the show. I am so excited for the world to see the show. I think it's just, so freaking cool. I haven't seen anything like it before. Our writer, Michael Malley, is unbelievable. Our director, Pete Siegel, is incredible. So I think it's going to be a, a really, really interesting watch for people. Excellent. Um, Alexander, thank you so much. That yeah, was thank you. Some performance. I really enjoyed what you did. in this uh, th Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Yeah. That means the world to me. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it's my kind of performance. <laughs> you know? And, and I want to say... I love your energy. You just seem like, like, like such, a, like I just, just life is just vibrating off you, man. I just, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. And I appreciate your interest in everything.
Thanks a lot, Alexander. Thank you very much. We'll see you yeah. soon, okay? Yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Do not move. What is he saying? Uh, he's saying he's our friend. You guide us up the mountain and show us where the Germans are, see? I got a bad feeling. He always got a bad feeling. Thanks. We gotta move. Somebody's putting a beat on me the whole way down this mountain. No time. We hurry. There's something out there. He's not one of them, sir. He's leading us into a Nazi regiment. You trust me? No. I don't trust you. Here we go. It's a sniper! You know he can pick us off at any time, right? Get him home. He's been watching us this whole time! What the hell is wrong with you? We are going to finish this mission.